Heavy Bullets was created by Terry Veilman, published by Devolver Digital, and released on September 18, 2014. It is a roguelike first-person shooter that builds itself on the importance of ammo conservation. This is a game I've known about for years, but was never interested enough in what I saw to play it. So this review actually marks a first for the channel, a requested game. So let's find out if Heavy Bullets is worth the look. On some computer screen, we see that the high-rise hunting grounds are having issues with their security system killing their customers. The only way to get the system to stop is to manually reset it by reaching the 8th basement floor of the building and finding the mainframe. So management offers the janitors of the building $5,000 to whoever can make it down and do just that. And that's all you're given for story. Just what is the high-rise hunting grounds or what their deal is is never explained. Which is fine enough, I suppose. I don't think roguelikes need a complicated story to justify why you have to keep going down into their levels. Though I do think some discoverable journals or something of the nature would have been a nice addition. The hunting grounds are a really strange place and I would have liked to know more about the building that you're in. But I think you're meant to look at the place itself more than any text on your screen. Heavy Bullets is a game with a low poly aesthetic draped in surreal dreamlike colors. I'm normally not a fan of these low poly style games, but I don't mind how Heavy Bullets looks. I think it's also an accomplishment that despite the neon colors, I never had any eye strain while playing the game. The only issue I can bring up with the graphics is chromatic aberration, which I will say outright is the worst graphical effect that is currently in games. This shit is seriously even worse than motion blur. Ugh. Thankfully, Heavy Bullets does let you turn it off in the options, so you don't have to look at it for too long. Sound, however, is a mixed bag. I think the music is pretty solid. It's got a decent amount of suspense, which matches the slow and steady pace of the game. Sound effects, on the other hand, are really out of place most of the time. A lot of obnoxiously loud chiptune sound effects score everything from gunfire to defeating a boss. I mean, seriously, defeating the level 4 boss will probably give you hearing damage if you don't turn down the volume. Ugh, at least the sound effects we're filling up on health are just bizarre rather than bad. Wish I could say the same for the gameplay. Heavy Bullets is a roguelike of all the classic trappings of the genre. Randomly generated levels of hazards and goodies strewn about by RNG. Permadeath is also here, so dying will send you back to the beginning of your adventure. There are ways to make progress within the overall game despite losing a run, and the difficulty of the game is fairly high. You'll need to traverse 8 levels to reach the end, and levels 4 and 8 have bosses on them to impede your progress further. There are three main resources in this game. Health, which you need to live, but is often very difficult to restore, as enemies do not drop any sort of healing items. Money, which is used to buy items and player upgrades from these vending machines. And finally, bullets, which are these small metal pill-shaped things that can be fired from your company-issued revolver firearm. Oh, there are also two more things you can carry, but they're not as important. Bombs act as a secondary weapon you can use if you end up being rushed down by multiple enemies at once. They aren't particularly safe to be near, so their use can be limited in some of the narrower hallways of the game. Key cards can be used to open up these locked doors. A random item will appear inside and you won't know what it is until you open the door. Don't rely on keycard doors to give you anything good though. I find that it's usually a crapshoot. It's best to rely on your gun instead of a random item. Speaking of that gun, in Heavy Bullets you have a revolver that can have up to 6 bullets in the chamber. While you might be thinking that a lot of the game's difficulty comes from smart ammo usage and planning ahead of reloads, you would be completely wrong like I was. First off, there's no penalty for not having your gun unloaded as long as you have bullets in reserve. Reloading is instant and can be done as fast as you can spam the R key. And while that is already a problem, the most damning thing is that ammo conservation is completely irrelevant. Bullets and heavy bullets will never truly be used, only sent somewhere else. You can just walk over to your bullet and pick it back up. 
meaning that every fight you enter, you will always come out of at a net positive. So being aggressive is not only the smart choice, it is objectively the right choice, because enemies are the best way to find money and more bullets. Yes, not only do you always get your bullets back, you can also gain bullets from defeating enemies. So as long as you can use your legs to walk over to a spot, you can just spam bullets with no penalty. In fact, due to some enemies having interesting hitboxes, spamming is also often the correct decision. As long as you can slam the R key or find the item that reloads for you, you'll be good. As for those enemies, it's a mix of critters and security turrets. Any moving enemy will always try and make a beeline towards the player. The only difference between them is how they do it and how they end up vulnerable to a shot. Most of security turrets are stationary, however, and you'll need to find their weak point instead while avoiding their shots. There are some special mentions though that break the trends. First off is these little sons of bitches called snake worms. Even when you're vigilant of every patch of grass, they'll sit and wait until the one moment you lower your guard to strike. They do the best job of making you paranoid of every room because you do not want to get poisoned in this game. It is a death sentence. <laughs> Also, these flying turrets are the fucking worst. I swear the hit detection on them is absolutely boring. Even though they bob up and down, I swear my shots just don't register because they don't feel like it. Of course, when you're having trouble taking down enemies, it's nice to have some items to help finish the job. You can carry one item with you by default, or two if you manage to find the backpack upgrade. These can range from passive to active and have a variety of effects. While a lot of them are nice, not every item here is created equally. Some, like the health potions or the silver life, can be invaluable since they give you a rare cushion against damage. Others, like the repellent or the spiked helmet, are practically useless. Like many roguelikes, you'll have to experiment to find out which items are the most useful to you. Of course, no matter how well you play, sometimes RNG will get the best of you and you'll end up croaking. Heavy bullets is different from a lot of roguelikes in that you don't get much from previous playthroughs. You can deposit money in one item into these bank vending machines here, which will carry over to future runs. But the problem with this is that what you can buy of money will ultimately be determined by RNG. A lot of roguelikes have found a happy compromise between RNG and skill, but making it so runs are RNG, but having upgrades for future runs will always mean that you start the next run stronger. Meanwhile, if you end up with a shit run in heavy bullets due to RNG, taking money out of the bank is practically a liability since you might not be able to put it back in. It's also worth noting that you will only keep whatever you deposited in the bank beforehand. If you die of $300, 20 bullets, and a gold potion, you're mostly shit out of luck on your items. There are two things you can do, however, to help this. Besides depositing in the bank beforehand, you can buy life insurance and a last will. Life insurance will make it so a certain amount of your money will be automatically deposited when you die. This amount won't be massive, so it's only really worth buying the first level of insurance, since later levels of it are gonna cost more than what you'll end up depositing in the bank when you die. The last will will take up an inventory space, but when you die with this item, you will keep all your bullets, bombs, keycards, and money for your next run. I think the best way to describe heavy bullets is as a roguelike that doesn't feel like a roguelike. It has the RNG and high difficulty, but a lack of meta progress between lives and a very short list of content means that there's little meat on the bones here. I mean seriously, I beat the game in about 3 hours and I saw just about everything there was to offer. Really? It's a game that's about the experience rather than the gameplay. You don't play Heavy Bullets for a sprawling roguelike experience with dozens of hours of content to be found. You play Heavy Bullets to get dropped into a bizarre fever dream basement safari. If that sounds like a great time to you, then you'll probably like Heavy Bullets. If you're like me and you want a more fleshed out game, then I don't think you'll be missing much by not taking a shot at this game. <laughs> 